Hi everybody, welcome back to Modern Warfare 3. Now in this video, I want to give you a quick start beginner's guide to zombies. Kind of explain what it's all about, what the story is, what you're doing, <laughs> and kind of how to have fun with this game. Because zombies could well be the best part of Modern Warfare 3. Honestly, it is really fun. Even if you play solo, even if you're not... A normal zombie players like me I normally find it far too complicated but this is really really good fun and you should definitely check it out it's a great way to level up weapons it's a great way to unlock other stuff and it's a great fun game mode okay so to start off with what's going on <laughs> okay what's going on so you probably heard already people compare Modern Warfare uh, 3 zombies to uh, DMZ which is a bit like so there's a big map a bit like um, a war zone map and what's happened in this area, the bad guys have released a zombie virus that has taken over. So we're part, we're the good guys, we're part of Operation Deadbolt. And we've got to go in, find out what's going on, and prepare various things and do lots of different missions as well. Now these missions are different to what you see in the top left hand corner. So in the top left hand corner of the screen you can see the daily challenges. They're the normal things that you get in zombies or multiplayer that you use to get more xp and level up guns and unlock stuff as well so that's separate what what actually we're doing is in the bottom right hand corner we see where it's a story mission so if we select that you'll see that we're working through a story and what you want to do you probably missed it but if you watch the zombie cinematic that's the little the story that tells you how everything started and kind of sort of what your role is in this thing but then if we go up to here so Welcome to Operation Deadbolt. When you start off, you basically you do these tier one missions, which are basically tutorials that give you an idea of, of how to operate in the map um, and to wander around and do things like tag stuff, open loot caches, repair vehicles, run zombies over, um, the, learn that you can buy stuff from, from walls and wall buys, um, how to pack a punch a weapon, um, use the mystery box and then you have your first kind of proper mission which is interceptor which is actually quite difficult to do at the moment because it's bugged um, and then you have your next story missions which actually then become a little bit easier so you work your way through these and we're going to be working our way through the story act one act two to act three so it's pretty cool but don't worry about it this is a really relaxed mode where you can just spawn in by yourself or with friends do not even have to have your headset on if you're in solo and run around and kill lots of zombies and level your stuff up so if we then uh, go to the gear section here, you kind of see you've got a load of gear, and then we can go to strike team as well, where you've got your different operators. So let's start here with our strike team. So you think, well, why have you got these different characters? Well, what happens is when you go into the map with a particular operator, say Captain Price here, and he's wandering around the map and he's picking stuff up, you'll find stuff. So in this case, he's found a medium rucksack, um, he's got a two-plate armor vest, he's found a durable gas max, which is still working, and he's got a self-revive kit. So that means that as long as he extracts alive, those that stuff comes out with him, and any weapons and any other gear he's got as well, which kind of goes towards XP, kind of gets sold off, but your weapons you, you kind of keep. So these are like your reserve squad that you can send in. So Rocket, for example, he's got the same stuff. He's got a slightly different gas mask. But let's say I wanted to, to start afresh. I could have uh, Strike Team Operator free. I could choose someone else. He would start off just with a small backpack with, with a, a one plate of uh, armor carry could go in. And the idea of this is if uh, Captain Price dies and he loses his stuff, I've got someone else that I can use that's, that's geared up. I don't have to kind of start again. You've kind of got these reserve characters. When you look at the gear, it's kind of a little bit similar as well. So for Captain Price, you can see he's got his medium rucks out, which means he can carry stuff. And then he has his loadout. Now, as far as tacticals um, and lethals goes, you can choose anything that you've unlocked in the main game to take in with you. Decoy grenade, quite good to take in. Um, proximity mine, again, I quite like that. And at the moment, I'm using the energy mine quite a lot because I tend to stay in the tier one areas, which is the outside of the map. Cage, you go to a little bit of tier two. I've heard that once you start really going into tier um, two and tier three, especially solo, you really want the shroud, which is your get out of jail free card. I think the Tactical Brit did a good video about it where he says, look, you have this one because when you trigger it, um, that makes you invisible to zombies so you can get out of tricky situations but basically the field upgrade the energy mine you drop it waits a couple of seconds and it kills all the zombies 
So let's get let's have a look at weapons. So your weapons are in two parts really. You've got your insured slots. You'll have one of these to start off with, and you can pick one of the normal guns that you have for your your normal uh, loadout. And then you have your contraband weapons. Now your contraband weapons, these are the ones that you pick up when you're in the map and then you bring out alive. And you get to keep these, but if you die or you leave them behind, they're lost. The same goes for your gun actually. So for example, what you probably want to do is you want to probably pick a gun that you want to level up that, that's okay, like a submachine gun or a marksman's rifle, uh, a battle rifle or a submachine gun. And you pick that and you have that as your main gun. But you can have two. Um, and then when you're in the game, you can then pick up other guns. Now, what I tend to do is I'll go in with one gun, because that's enough to kill zombies in Tier 1, and do some of the basic um, missions, and then I'll pick up another gun as well. And maybe I'll use the mystery box, uh, which you pay to unlock to get a better gun, with the idea that when I extract, I bring a re some really nice weapons with me, like this marksman's rifle. Um, that's a nice one. Um, that LMG is really good as well. So over time, as you're doing mission after mission after mission, not only are you completing the story missions, but you're also bringing up a nice arsenal of nice weapons as well. Now these weapons, you can't mess around with them. You, there's no gunsmith for them like here. Um, but what you can do, is there are certain perks and stuff that you can have that you can upgrade them um, if you need to. So for example, what I could do, I could say, I'll tell you what, we'll have that light machine gun. And then I could, if I wanted to, say, go in with, I don't know, a sniper rifle. Now, personally, um, I I wouldn't, that, that's not something um, I would do. Um, I would only ever go in with one gun, because I want to find another gun, because these guns are all good. And in fact, that gun's too good. <laughs> I don't want to take that gun in, because it's too good. Um, let's take something that's only level two, because that'll be enough. Let's take that one in. Because that'll be enough to get me started, and then I'll find better guns as I go along. Now, then we have stuff that we can take. So, as you're playing and you extract, you can bring certain stuff out with you. So, if we go to add item here, we have our acquisition stash in the bottom left-hand corner, and our crafting available. So, with crafting, as you unlock, I think they call them blueprints, um, you will then be able to make... Um, certain things and then they do other things so I know that sounds a bit stupid doesn't it but for example you have these tools now what these do is that if you have a gun um, that you've uh, you pick up in the map that's just standard if you have the epic aether tool if you use that on it will turn it into an epic weapon like that and then if you have a raw ethereum crystal um, if you have those they will pack a punch your gun straight away if you're not familiar with pack a punching what it is, it's a zombie-specific way of um, upgrading your gun so it's really cool. It has more wem ammo, um, more power, makes a cool sound, all this sort of stuff. So generally, the progression through the through the um, mission as you're doing it normally involves at some point pack a punch in your gun, because it or guns, because it makes them more powerful. We also um, can then make things like the stamina cans. Now, what all these are is these are perks that you use in game and then they're in the form of either a can that you can drink or find in the map or make at this point if you've unlocked it and it's not on cooldown or there's various machines um, around the map um, vending machines that you can buy these and so they give you faster speed faster reload better health all the all this sort of stuff it's really cool and lots and lots of fun then you've got your ammo mod mod so for example brain rot ammo mod what that does is when you shoot um, a zombie every few zombies one will get brain rot and it'll attack other zombies cryo freeze freezes them again they all have their own descriptions um, and then the ability to make wonder weapons but that's quite a long way off then you have the acquisition stash now this is the stuff that you've actually extracted with that the game lets you keep that you can then um, take into a game as well so for example I could equip the brain rot ammo mod so that when I spawn into the game I can apply that mod to my submachine gun as it is one of my missions that's coming up is I need to uh, use the cryo freeze ammo mod uh, and kill a load of zombies and devil dogs or hellhounds with that. So actually, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to unequip that. I don't. I don't want that. So that's kind of your character. So you should be able to see that as you're going along. Oop, where are we? 
as you're going along, you're going to be collecting better guns, you're going to be collecting blueprints to be able to make um, more powerful um, guns and more powerful gear. Well, the idea is, at some point, you'll have the blueprints and the weapons where when you spawn in, you'll be able to spawn in with a crystal that will pack a punch your gun or gun straight away. You'll have a few cans of... Um, of the perks so you'll have like juggernaut to make you more powerful you have the highest health one you'll have the one that makes you run faster and reload faster so then you can go straight on to the higher missions at the moment you're probably thinking what on earth are you talking about rob so <laughs> what we're gonna do, let's let's jump in and, and it sort of things will become apparent so let's just quick look at this story mission so our next story mission here is freezer burn so this is a tier three mission so, ahead of any troop movements, Miller suggests a novel method of clearing a path for the advancing force. Kill 70, 50 zombies with Cryophy's ammo mod. And then um, slow... Oh, right. 10 hellhounds with Cryophy's ammo mod. So, basically, I've got to shoot loads of zombies and loads of hellhounds with a weapon with the Cryophy's ammo mod. So, that's all we've got to do um, to progress that particular thing. Now, that's not all we've got to do in the map. Um, but let's just confirm this. Now I'm going in by myself. Now at this point, pause, because it's very easy to forget to um, apply a weapon. And so if at this point you see you're not carrying a weapon, unless you want to go in uh, you know, with just your hands, go back and apply a weapon and get your stuff. So we're going to ready up, we're going to match back. Now, I turned off matchmaking, so I'm just going to go in by myself, because I like, you know, I, I play solo, because I've got a limited amount of time. Um, and just remember as well, there is no pause in this so if you go in and you get called away to do something else your character is going to die and lose all their stuff and leave it behind um so you know do bear that in mind when you're doing stuff this is a bit like playing a battle royale but i will say this is way easier than dmz uh, for a solo it's much more enjoyable um as a solo and it is really a lot of fun just to go around and um, and just kill zombies and level up your guns um, and level up your character, and uh, I've I've enjoyed it. I mean, I'm level 47 right now in the game, um, and I've probably done 10 of those levels in zombies. I've probably played more zombies in Modern Warfare 3 than I have in any other previous Call of Duty, because they all tend to be a bit complicated, don't they, with their Easter eggs. Um, or we've had a couple of lackluster zombie games as well, haven't we, recently? I'm trying to think. Modern Warfare 2 didn't have zombies, did it? It had co-op missions. Um, and Vanguard's zombie... Was it Vanguard before that? We're, we're a bit pants. So, we're going to load into the map. We're just going to drop in. Now, the other thing is that other teams can't kill us. No friendly fire is on. We could go and um, get an invite to another team or invite players to us. It's all... Um, very friendly that way. In fact, sometimes if a team is doing a mission and you come in on the end of it, you can get the um, rewards for it as well. Um, so it's all, it's all good. It's nice and relaxed. Because the big problem with DMZ was if you were playing solo, um, it did mean that you you put, you were often in a situation where um, you were at a massive disadvantage. If a team of three people came up on you, they could just kill you. Or I think you have teams of four, couldn't you, in the end as well. You can extract whenever you like. Um, and extraction is relatively easy as long as you're in a tier one location. Okay, so we're dropping into the map now. Um, we'll bring up the map in just a second so you can kind of see what my thoughts are about what we're going to do. So we know we need to slow down 50 zombies with uh, the gun. So first thing I'm going to do is just bring up my backpack by pressing down on the D-pad. And I'm just going to apply the ammo mod to my gun. There we go. And I'm going to use my stammer up can. There we go. So... We're good to go. So let's have a look at the map. So where am I? So there's me. So we've got these contracts. And if you look at the right, you've got the legends. Now, generally, the contracts that are easy to do, or relatively easy to do, when you're a solo player are eliminate the bounty. Um, they take a bit of English, but you take on a big zombie, a big monster, that's quite difficult to kill, but not impossible. As long as you keep moving and keep running around, you'll be able to kill them. Um... Eliminate the bounty, so that's another one I could do. Uh, there's a wall by weapon. Deliver the ca cargo missions are very difficult to do solo, as well as ether extractor missions. Um, let's go in. Let's see what else we got. Ones that I would have a go at. Defend the ground station. They are possible to do those. You've just got to keep moving. Um, these ones here, these ether nests, these are 
relatively easy to do. So these are like um, uh, infected places that have like these cysts, these big yellow balls that you've got, in, got to go in and you've got to shoot them all. Um, and once you've shoot, sh shot them all, you then get a, a reward. Um, and then there's infested stronghold. No, we don't. You don't want one of those. Death perception. No, we don't want one of those. Eliminate the bounty. Wall by weapon. Raid weapon stash. That's not too bad. Ether extractors. We want to avoid that. There's a vehicle. Defend the ground station. Raid weapon stash. Eliminate the bounty. The one you want is the. Here we go. Not the ether extractor. There's basically one where what you have to do is you have to destroy these um, uh, things that are growing out of the ground. Uh, it might be out. I don't think it is out last. Let's have a look. Ether extractors. Deliver the cargo. And basically, in those missions, what it is, you, you have to pick up these things that um, damage these pods that grow out of the ground, and then you've got to shoot them. Um, but you'll know them when you come across them. But just avoid things like the convoy mission, avoid the ether extractor, avoid bases basically where there's enemy AI because the enemy AI very can be very problematic. So let's have a look. So they're going over there to get that bounty one. So what we'll do? Let me ping this by pressing up on the D-pad. Got a contract here. There we go. And so now we're just going to make our way across. The zombies themselves, when you're running around, they're, they're not a threat at all in Tier 1 because you can run faster than them and you can just run around them and they won't catch up with you. When you get to Tier 2, they can run faster than you and Hellhounds can run faster than you as well. And you can use, make use of your slide. And what you can do is if you sort of get them to train, always go for headshots. What they drop, you can see it on the floor, is ammo, and they'll drop um, armor plates as well, and they'll dro drop gadgets as well sometimes. So if you're running out of ammunition, just farm zombies or armor plates. Far, you know, before you get into a difficult situation, just farm them. There we go. So. If we go over here, so that blue light there, that's the mystery box. Now, I won't have enough money at the moment. Oh, there's some more, we can get some more ammo over here, should we wish to. So this would be a terminus stronghold. So we want to avoid this, but I just wanted to... All oh, right, we can't get the mystery box. Oh, there it is, so there's the mystery box. See, I haven't got enough money, 950, and that will give you a random weapon, which you can then use. Let's get in this vehicle. Where's that lump thing gone? They already got it. So that I was looking at the map. control there we go that's the one I'm talking about right let's let's go and do that one they're nice and easy to do that's a good example of one
like it's on the other side of that. Now, we've got to be careful because we're in a tier 2 area now, so we don't really want to stay here. Okay, so it's all the way over there. What we're going to do, before we get there, we're just going to see if we can get ourselves... There was an armour plate in the back of me, wasn't there? Now, there's a wall weapon over here. <laughs> a bit of a punch. Let's use my special. Let's go and see what this wall weapon is. So, what have we got? We've got 1,200. So we really want something else. Oh, it's a pistol. Um no. You can always shoot vehicles and if you're lucky they'll set off a car alarm. Right. We're just gonna farm these zombies just to get a few more armor plates and a bit more ammo. going to go inside here. There's a pack-a-punch machine in here. Uh, we need 5,000 uh, though to get. There's the pack-a-punch machine. But what we might be able to find is a crate that's got um, another gun in. Uh, we don't want that. You can equip stuff and the beauty of that is that you can then uh, sell stuff at buy stations. See what there is upstairs. Okay, that was a little bit disappointing that we haven't found anything. Let's have a look. Something over here. Alright, that's that will fire us up into the air, I think, so that we can come down somewhere else. Oh here we go, we can buy this. What what's this? Not enough essence. Okay, fair enough. Here we go. Always going with the headshots. In fact, I'm not quite sure what this is. We're gonna just open this up. Yeah, it, yeah, I thought it was. That set puts us into the sky, so that we can do it. So there we go. Come on. Where is it? Got a contract here. Smoke out that hornet's nest. 
Now, when you're picking up contract with, with the little radio, be very, very careful because what happens is that you can't shoot for a little bit. My team was investigating some local anomalies when they went dark. Well, technically speaking, these anomalies are. Yeah, no time for that, Barrera. Just call them spores. Let's see how we're doing on our thing. Slow 50 zombies, 15. We haven't come across any how hard hounds yet, yet, so. Here we go. So, first things first, we pick up these. Things, and then we throw them on there. On there. They damage these, uh, whatever they are. Wait for them to go red. And they, ooh. All you have to do is once you've killed the, each one, you have to pick up the little in inhibitor again, and then go and find the next ones. And then we lob that one on that one. Lob that one on that one. Keep moving. Let's just run around here for a bit. Down just to kill a few numbers. Right, they should be ready to die. Grab this one, lob that one onto that one, lob that one onto that one. Go back in here, what did we miss? Now we've got a second weapon, which is better than our... Oh, they're pretty similar. So. Got the stuff. They should be ready to be destroyed. And this one. Max ammo. Let's go and see what rewards we've got. So let's use that. Large back crack. So let's equip that. Ooh. And let's uh, equip the self revive. That's good. So now, how are we doing on 
23 or oh, 10 hellhounds because the thing is about the the mod for the for the freezing uh, the enemies is that it doesn't work on every single enemy so what we'll do oh what's that one there defend ground station okay so what we'll do now is we will just extract so you can just see what that's like so how to extract as well um, so what we really need to do is find a vehicle and then go to an extraction point okay so, so oh, fact, there's, there's a vehicle there isn't there so we're getting this vehicle Obviously, what you could do at this point um, is go and pack a punch a weapon. In fact, if a pack a punch is on the way, we will do it. And be careful when you see these things. There we go. There's a. There's a bad guy up there. So we're going to avoid those guys. You can kill them, but when you start off, they can be quite tricky. Um, and they're very good at destroying your armour. Yeah, that's where the vehicle is. It's with those guys. So let's keep going. See, th this is tier 2 and tier 3, so we want to avoid all that. Where we're ultimately heading is over there. That sniper's firing at me. And you could be going into all these buildings and you could be looting them, picking stuff up, going to buy stations. And, you know, you, you've got quite a long time. So, although in this particular case, we've, um, we've, we're have we going to bail after just sort of doing one thing. Okay, so there's a buy station over here, but we're gonna we're gonna ignore that because there's too many zombies. We're just gonna see if we can get to this extraction point. Driving through it. in cash.
So somebody's already taken the helicopter. But... We can still take it. Right, we need to be heading northwest, don't we? Yep. When we, by the time we get over there, um, it'll have kind of uh, re resed in and we can activate it again. Oh, there's a pack a punch machine. Right, let's go and pack a punch. Uh, fancy pack a punch in this, to be honest. Oh, not there though. Here's the pack a punch machine. Remember, if you're not quite sure, you can always look at the. Legend. Where is it? Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Where is it? On the roof? Aha. Or should we pack a punch this thing? Uh, let's pack a punch this one. <laughs> right, anything else worth picking up? Right. Head back towards the extraction. far now so hopefully this has been useful watching me as a an, a zombies amateur um, work my way through um, hopefully I'll give you an idea of how much fun this is right here we go so it's just outside this wall now what happens is extraction can seem like a bit complicated to start off with, but trust me, it's not. If you've got one pack a punch gun, um, you'll be fine. So the helicopter is going to come in. So the idea is that you can train these zombies. So run around in like figures of eight to get them all to go in one place. And then if you use the mine, for example, like I am here, that can kill loads of them. And your pack a punch gun will kill loads, and then just run back through where you've been, and you'll end up with loads of ammo. Ooh, double points. Bonus. Try not to get trapped. Here comes a helicopter. Now, with the helicopter, we don't want to get into the helicopter until the last few seconds. We want to make the most of having all these lovely zombies to kill. Get in. Three seconds to go. So, uh, long line at 
And that is it, we've extracted. So, <laughs> I know this has been a little bit of a long video, but I wanted to really show you how easy it is to play zombies when you stay in the tier, tier one area. We've done a little mission, we've had a wander around, we've pack a punch the gun, we've leveled up, we've had a bit of fun, which I think is the most important thing, and we've enjoyed, um, we've enjoyed uh, playing zombies. We've come out with a couple of, they're okay weapons. When you pack a punch a weapon, it doesn't come out it doesn't stay pack a punch when you've left. When you, when you left, it goes back to being normal again. So that's where having the pack a punch crystals come in handy. But we have actually got a large rucksack. That's quite important, which means we can carry more stuff. I think that means I can now carry a third weapon as well. Um, and um, yeah, so there we go. Hopefully, you've now got a better idea of how to get started in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's Zombies. If you enjoyed the video, hit like, consume on the same press subscribe, and I will, of course, see you again soon.